Hi there, this is Noah with the Marketing and Training Department. This is going to be a brief video tutorial on how you can use the ERS system to do targeted automated upselling after the sale with the use of automatic messages. Now before we dive into that, I want to encourage you to like and subscribe to the ERS YouTube channel by clicking on the link in the upper right hand corner or the lower right hand corner so you never miss out on any updates. All right, so let's get rolling. We're logged into the back end. I am going to go to admin, rules, availability rule sets, and I am going to add a new one. I'm going to go ahead and call it concessions post sale upsell. Now, as the description field says with that little placeholder text in here, this is uh, the text that's in there is just for internal tracking. You know, it's just for your information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to be used with automatic message of same name. And I'm even going to put my my initials after there so that it's kind of like official, like all of my peon employees are like, oh, the boss said it. That's. Yeah, I'm sure that's how that would go. Anyway, oh, and then I'm also crazy, and it bothers me when the first letter isn't capitalized. So thank you for bearing with my foibles. So I'm going to click into the rules, drop down, and say does not contain specific category item. I'm going to put category name matching my uh, the name of the category that I want to target this to. So basically what this means is that if their order did not contain something from the concessions and add-ons category, then the email is going to send. So minimum count needs to be one. So in other words, if they don't have one in there, then this email will send. If I put in minimum count two, then the email would still send if they only had one such item in their cart. And minimum value works the same way, but just based on pricing. So if, for example, if you do, you know, your snow cone machines for $75 and your popcorn machines for $60, if you want to put $75 as the minimum value in that field, that would mean that this would send if they had a snow cone machine, but not if they had a popcorn machine. Now, if they got a popcorn machine and a uh, cotton candy machine, then the price would go over that $75 threshold and, and the email wouldn't send. So that's how that works. I am going to go ahead and actually, you know what, first I'm going to copy this to save myself a bit of time down the road. I'm going to go ahead and submit my changes. Then I am going to go to Documents, Automatic Messages, and then I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to copy and paste the name from the, no, not there, from the Availability Rule Set. And then I am going to give it a subject line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and edit the body of this email. I'm going to speed up this part of the video so that you don't have to sit there twiddling your thumbs for several minutes watching me make this email look pretty. Okay, so I am going to now... I need to actually get the link to put in here. So I'm going to open, let's see here, I'm going to go to miscellaneous order settings, and I'm going to right click on it to open it in a new tab. I am going to look for a URL in the yellow instructions area. Yes, allow changes to activated order. This is the setting that I'm looking for. And by the way, you need to make sure that this setting is enabled if you want your customers to be able to add items to their cart after they've placed their order already. So I have this enabled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this URL. I'm not going to copy the HTTPS part and the two slashes that come after that. And you'll see why in just a minute here. So I've copied that. I am going to close out this browser tab. And then I'm going to highlight the click here part, add a link. And so you can see that the protocol, that's where we put the HTTPS and the two slashes. And we've got that in there. So sweet. Okay, we are ready to rock. I'm going to say OK to that. And this is looking good for now. I'm going to go ahead and submit it. So then I am going to go into the CRM again in a new browser tab. 
And if I see a name of a customer that I know for sure is, is from test orders that I've created, I'm going to go ahead and click into that customer. And if not, I'm just going to go ahead and do a search for the customer in there. So, you know, if you have yourself in there with your, you know, personal email address or whatever, just make sure that it's an email address that you have access to. Oh, and the orders that that customer has that you're going to use shouldn't contain any concession machines. So it looks like we've got one order for this test customer. So let's see if it has any concession machines. It does not. Okay. So that's order number 1224, and it's my personal email address. So I'm going to go ahead and close this tab out, and then I'm going to click back into this email. And then I am going to put the order number in here and the email address in here. And I am going to test this message, and I need to click one more time at the bottom to continue. So then I can go into my email inbox. And yes, this number right here is obscene. I don't do that with my work email. I'm on top of my work email. My personal, not so much as you can see. All right, so it looks like the email sent okay. Let's take a quick look at it. Okay, it's looking good. Let's test out that link. Sweet. So this is working great. The only thing that I still need to make sure to do, I tend to forget this when I'm working on automatic messages. It's a bad habit, so I want to get out of that habit. So I'm going to go back into that message, and I am going to set my days until send and my from ad uh, email address. So I'm going with the company email merge field. And I'm going to say two days before the event. So that's, we got to go minus two. And I completely forgot to attach the availability rule set. If I had left this as is, number one, it wouldn't have sent because there was no days until send. But if I had, then it would have just sent to everybody. So don't be a schmuck like me. Make sure you're doing all the other stuff that you need to do to, to you know, make sure that this is going to work properly. And so, okay, so now this is good. So I'm going to go ahead and submit it. So in a situation like this where I forgot to put that availability rule set on the automatic message before I did my test, I should do another test because part of the test is to make sure that the availability rule set is working correctly. And since I didn't have the availability rule set attached to this automatic message at the time that I did my first test, I actually didn't test that part of it. So, I mean, I t was able to test the link, you know, and see how it looks in my inbox that's useful but but again you really do want to check the the functionality as far as whether it's only going to send to the people that you want it to so again i would do another test in a real world situation if i hadn't when i did my first test if i hadn't already put the availability rule set in that automatic message so you get the idea basically what you want to do is you want to create different rules for different inventory be careful because you don't want to send you know, two or three different upselling emails to your customer, that would be bugging and kind of spamming them. So be strategic in the way that you do this. You can actually target a specific item rather than a specific category, if you like. So think through, you know, how you can be strategic with your upselling and use those availability rule sets to really kind of, you know, be strategic in those ways and generate repeat business. So, you know, this is just another way to increase your average ticket size is what this really comes down to. This is just another way to increase sales without you having to do a bunch of manual labor. You know, once you set this up, it's going to work. It's going to be automated and you should see a little bump in your average ticket size. So that's all we've got for today. Fairly short and sweet. Hope this was helpful. As always, the tech support department is happy to help. 